Hello there, how are you? And welcome to Anomaly Collapse, an all-new turn-based strategy roguelite releasing right now. That is right, unless I've made a huge goof, the game should be available over on Steam this very second. I'll even have a link in the description below so that you can shoot over there and give it a look in if you like what you see. That is because this video is sponsored by the good folks over at Spiral Up Games. They have been an absolute treat to work with, giving me a little head start on the game so I can get this video ready for you for the day of release. In addition to that, they are even doing some Steam Key giveaways. All you have to do is head over to the game's official Twitter page and participate in their fun and shenanigans over there for a chance to win. I'll even have another link in the description down below to send you over to their Twitter if you want to have a shot at winning a free copy. I'm gonna end up skipping through a lot of the storied dialogue where the characters are speaking and explaining a lot of stuff purely because I'm trying to make this as condensed as possible. So long story short, we have Glitch. Glitch is our little protagonist for the tutorial section right here. He's kind of like a roguey, fast hitting, fast moving type of character. Now he works for the Anomaly Reaction Association, shorthand ARA. Remember that, that's who he works for, Elite Agent of ARA. An advanced party who deal with the crisis in Epsilon, City of Epsilon behind us. He was with a team, they were going to drop some neutralizer to take care of the anomalies in the area, but the neutralizer is not working. He got separated from his team after a big nasty got in the way. And so he's currently flying solo for a little bit, trying to find what's going on. The main map, here we can see where we can go. So we only have one potential target over here. We can move over and fight this guy. I can also show you if I click on my the little character page over here, we have a breakdown of stats, health, armor, all of our cool things. We have active and passive abnormalities. We'll get to those in a bit and our skills if you want to see what your character can do. But let's move straight on and go and fight our little friend over here and we'll get into combat. Look how beautiful this looks, by the way. Oh, it's so nice. The art team have slain this. All of it, art team, interface, music. This is, this is, it's genuinely, genuinely done really, really well. Now, hostile intent, whenever enemies try and attack, they telegraph what they're going to do before they do it, so we have a chance to react. If we end our turn and we're still in harm's way, we're going to get hit. So, we can see that this little guy in this example is trying to attack me over here, so I need to move away. We have options such as moving and doing actions, like attacking. This comes in the form of movement points and action points. So if we take a look down here, we can see Glitch has two movement points, so we can move two spaces away. Pretty good for us, so if I use my movement tool, I can move to the space behind this little guy. There we go. I have an action point. I can use my slash. Boom. <laughs> I didn't expect it to crit. It actually just one shot crit him. It shouldn't do that. Well, it's never done that, but okay. We just one shot him with it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now AP, this is important. So every turn you will restore one AP. Most basic attacks will cost one AP. A lot of skills cost one AP, but some might be a bit more expensive as you move forward. The important part to remember is you'll get one AP every turn. But what if you spend that AP, then you only get one back. You can just not use AP and start stockpiling and pool up how much AP that you've got, right? You get one at the beginning of each turn. If you do nothing, you don't move, you don't do an action, you just immediately end your turn and you rest, you will get two AP. You will get a bonus extra AP. Save up AP, obliterate dudes with your big attacks. But there is a bit of a gimmick to that that I'll get into when we get the opportunity to show you. But for now, just know that that strategy exists, but there's more that we can do with that. So, we have our rewards section. We have active abnormalities and passive abnormalities. Active abnormalities are basically skills that you can get. So, for example, if I click on this, it will show exactly what this ability does. It is a directed detonation attack. It basically sets an area on fire. <laughs> it's, yeah, we can set a space on fire and then burn enemies. However... We have passives over here, and these passives are also really, really good because, for example, balance will gain an extra AP if we have less than three at the beginning of a turn. So as long as I'm using my AP every turn, I at least have two, which is pretty good. But we will lose one if we have more. So this discourages stockpiling, but encourages, you know, burning AP as much as we can. We also have run, where we have a 20% chance to gain an extra movement point when using skills. So if we move two spaces, hit a dude, might get a movement point to be able to move out of harm's way again, just in case you got a little too close for comfort pretty good. So I'm going to take balance in this case, because I really like the balance trait. I think it's pretty nice. Now you can get a breakdown at the end of the fight right here. We have our experience gained, which is 25 total, just for going here and doing this. But because Glitch killed a guy, 
He got 30 total because I think each enemy kill is worth 5 XP. I don't know if elites give you more, but basically all normal enemies do this. And this will be important later, and I'll get to that when we get a chance to. But I want to point out something specific about XP. Now, abnormalities. Basically, these are going to be your skills and passives. We already know this. Uh, equipping them, simple enough. Click on his page, open him up, go into passives. Here's the balance. Bam, it's equipped. Look at that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Who is this we have over here? Why, this looks like a physician's figure. <gasps> Could this be the cutie from the title screen? I think it is. <laughs> we have Mira. Mira is a physician here in Epsilon. She's basically just a civilian who's gotten lost along the way, and we're going to have to take her with us because she's just in danger. However, she has a lot of good support abilities she can help us with and is a marksman, so she can shoot this little gun that she's carrying with the anesthetic shot, which funny enough, is pretty sick, to be honest. So it's going to do basic damage. So basic means it will only cost, you know, one point and have no cooldown. We don't have any abilities that have a cooldown yet, but I'll get to that when we get to that. So her attack will deal damage and it will grant palsy for two turns, which means indirect damage taken is plus two, but MP regen is also minus one. And what does indirect damage do? Well, if I hit T over here, I can look at this hyperlink because just about everything is hyperlinked. So you should never be too confused about what something does. You can always see. This is something that I am so, 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 so happy exists. Because in too many games, there are too many stats and too many effects, and they don't tell you. You have to open up a help menu and go into the glossary and look up what... Oh, i got to scroll through all these things. No, it tells you right here on the page. It does this. <gasps> what does that do? This is what it does. Indirect damage comes from non-actively triggered actions, for example, cop attack, slamming, or damage dealing traits. Amazing. So anything that's not me directly hitting a dude, he'll take more damage from it. We love that. Let's go and fight this next dude over here. Now that you've got an extra teammate, this should be quick and easy, right? Do, 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 do. Look at her. She's aw, she's nice. Oh, look at her standing on the front lines with a little gun in hand. Ew. My brother, ew. Oh, he crowded me. Okay, so this is going to teach us about spaces and about co-op attacks. So, if two of our dudes are in the same area, the same grid, which, yes, you can occupy the same space. It isn't a one-person, you know, little isolated zone. We're not playing hopscotch over here. We can all sit in the same space if we want. If we are, and we do an attack, we get co-op attacks. They will chime in. They will help us fight because we are next to them. Very, very handy. In addition to that, the grid capacity. So, normally... The grid space will have up to three empty slots. There's three capacity for each grid. Most characters, like our characters, will take up one, right? The grid will have a capacity of three. However, if you fill up that space, you can no longer move to it. So it becomes a barricade. There's too many dudes there. The, you know, the, the hallway is blocked. Traffic jam can't get through. Problem. But you also cannot move to that grid at all. So you're kind of stuck on the outside. In addition to that, if you're in this crowded space, having too many units will make it crowded. That's what this little dude just did. He just got all up and close and personal into my grill, and now everyone takes a penalty. So you see that little bit of damage that we took at the start here? He's crowding our space. But what we can do is, because we're both sitting in the same area, we can co-op attack this guy. If I just do a normal attack, Mira is going to join in and do her attack automatically. Now, Notice what's just happened. I started my combat and I had two AP. That is because Glitch has our cool passive bonus where he starts and gets extra as long as he's under three. But my slash now costs two. That is because you can stockpile extra AP, but every time you spam a basic attack, the cost will go up more as long as you're spamming it in that turn. This is why we want extra abilities that will have different costs, lower costs, so I could do a basic attack and then a skill or an ability and alternate what we do, because they're trying to make sure you can't just take the basic slash, stockpile six, and then just smack, 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 smack. Can't do that, right? Not without some intervention, at least. In addition to that, if I wanted to, I can come over here and look at the effects that are currently happening to him, and we can see that because we're crowded, our critical resistance is reduced, so enemies in this space will get crit more easily. <gasps> Oh no, and it's also crammed. So we take damage equal to 10% of our max life at the end of the turn. So I don't want to be in there. I'm getting out of there. It's no longer crammed. Shared AP, very important to mention. Our AP pool is shared amongst our characters. So depending on what you want to do with each character, you might want to pull some AP so that say your healer can do more healing things and more support range damage things. 
Normally this comes in the form of, let's say there's enemies that are out of my range and I could waste time running glitch across the screen or I can just have him end his turn and wait there and make the enemy come to me and I can pull my AP and then blitz someone with whoever's turn comes up next. It's a bit of strategy that you want to put in mind. So right now I could attack with mirror or I could walk over here and my turn get some extra AP and then let glitch do two basic attacks. I'm not gonna do that though, because if I come over here and we shoot this guy in the back of the head, glitch should co-op with us and kill him. Yay. And aha, I can show you in a second. Just give me a moment to get through picking my rewards. We have the bottled arc. This scales with mind and tech. We can see down here it does three damage, but it has mind, two arrows up, tech, one arrow up. In fact, if we hover over the number, it even shows us the math. We can see the calculation as to how this number came to be. I love it. You're never going to have to ask questions about damage calculations or about what does what. This game is laying it all out there for you. I love it. So this scales off mind and tech. But if you see over here, we have a little glitch portrait with a little green thumbs up. This glitch is dominant stat. It's strength. It's going to boost our strength and we're going to get a new ability called linear regression. What's linear regression do? Well, it does a lot of damage because glitch has a lot of strength and a decent bit of tech because strength and tech are both his dominant stats. Mostly strength, but tech is his secondary best stat. So we do damage to the target and knock it back a grid. Now, if you've ever played a game like this, a grid based turn based thing like this, where you have to move dudes around, you know for a fact that disrupting your enemy's formation and making them have to move without them wanting to is gonna be insanely good. And if we sneak attack, we knock them back an extra space. What's a sneak attack? Why it's hitting a dude behind, easy we just move behind him brick him in the back of the head and he gets knocked two spaces forward that's insanely good or we have the directed detonation which uses support which is good for mira but wait why does it only do two damage that's because i'm currently selecting onto glitch and we are now seeing all of these upgrades through his eyes so we're not going to do much damage with this if we use it on glitch what if i click on mira the numbers adjust because she's got better calculations for this because she has better support stats than glitch does it's just handy, right? Having said all of that, I'm still going to take the brick because the brick to the back of the head does a lot of damage and it's really funny and it disrupts enemy formation and it's just good. We're going to take that. We got our brick. Now, looky looky over here. There's that 25 encounter XP I was telling you about, but why did she get 30? Because she landed the killing blow. Even though we did a co-op attack and Glitch was technically the last guy to hit, whoever initiates a co-op attack is still the one who counts as a kill. So if Glitch does an attack and knocks an enemy down to one life and, and Mira's co-op does the rest of the life and finishes him off, it will still count as a Glitch kill. So be mindful. Your XP is going to vary depending on who's doing the main killing. Let's get out of here. Level 2. Stats go up. Flanking. We've unlocked a new technique. So this is a passive effect that he gains from leveling up. So now his damage is plus 30% when flanking. What was flanking again? When you've got someone in front and then you're in the back. So basically we want to have mirror on one side of an enemy and we want to put glitch behind the enemy, therefore flanking because they're not expecting it, etc, etc. Technically a sneak attack is just anytime you're behind someone, but a flank you kind of need your dude in front and you in the back. Kind of. It, 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 we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll, we'll get it done. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Mirror leveled up. Boost morale. This is actually insanely important. So we recover two life for one friendly unit within two grids when joining a co-op attack, when joining. So not initiating. So if Glitch does an attack and she joins, we'll heal for a little bit. Amazing. But there is some give and take to this because for Mira to join a co-op attack means she has to exist in the same space as her teammates. Glitch is a melee dude. That means for her to do a co-op and then heal us, she has to be up on the front lines. So now we've got a little bit of like strategy where you can either keep Mira away and shoot from a distance, but she's not gonna be healing with her passive as much. Put her in the front lines next to glitch she'll be more vulnerable but she'll be doing more active healing that way comes down to what you want to do we come in here we go to our active abnormality we've got the brick equip the brick our strength goes up by one don't believe me look at my strength 12.4 13.4 this is also where we're going to see all of our breakdowns of what we have so as you can see he is dominantly a strength boy but he has really high tech as well five percent crit crit damage synergy percent so it shows how much damage a unit deals in a cop attack pretty good slam damage how much damage unit deals when ramming into someone mm, pretty good right i wonder who's going to do slam damage so we come over here to mirror and we can see she has a lot of support and tech 
both split down the middle. She isn't bad at mind either, to be honest. I'd say that's really strong for her as well. Strength is her only real weak link, which is why we've got Glitch, because he's all about strength. Yay! Next encounter. I think this is the interactable objects. Yes, I love this. So not only do we have a lot of grid-based movement where we can put our players in different spaces and mess with the enemy's spaces, we have stuff we can interact with. And just by being next to it, we'll get a little extra command that lets us issue, you know, special orders for it. So because we're next to the barrel, we can push it. I wonder what it'll do. Wait, it's going to fly across the screen and obliterate that guy is what it's going to do. So first dude just outright died. There's now fire all over the ground. This little dude is currently burning. Also, if I click on my enemy, I can take a look and see what he can do. This is really handy if you need to strategize and plan out who your priority kill targets are. For example, I can see that he is burning and he's going to take four burn damage at the beginning of his turn. He's as good as dead, but we can also see his abilities. He can shoot, so he hits, you know, several spaces away and is able to shoot me from a distance, but we're not too worried about that because he's effectively gone. And turn, and turn, he burns to death, combat's over, bam, we are the best, easy peasy. Ooh. We've got that Tendergrass again for setting dudes on fire, which is really nice for Mira because it calcs off of support. See the damage increase? We like that. Also, bear in mind, there's little stars in the upper right corner that will give you an idea as to the rarity or the quality of your upgrade. So this is a two-star upgrade. It must be pretty good. These are one-star upgrades. They're pretty normal. They're pretty common. You know, you're going to find them more often than not. That's not to say it's the rule, the end all be all rule to just take whatever has the highest star count because you do want to plan around synergy and what works with your team and sometimes lower quality ones are going to work better, we know this, but more often than not the highest star count is going to have more dramatic effects. Now our directed detonation, we deal damage to the target and ignite the grids within range, resets the cooldown when you end a turn on a burning grid. Easy enough, we're going to set dudes on fire, let's go over here and set a dude on fire. Hopefully. Hopefully. I love, dude, the art style. It's so good, dude. They're so well animated. Hello, my guys. We're going to exterminate the hostiles. So he's currently plotting some devious actions over here. But if I just decide to smack smack. Eight damage there. Co-op. And there's that plus two heal. What a goober. Now, if I wanted to, I could walk over here and brick this guy in the head and knock him into the corner. Because I have enough AP left. Because, uh-huh, uh-huh, see, we used one, but the brick only costs one, so Glitch was able to do two actions in one turn and corner this dude. So handy. Now, we can, if I want... Oh, if I if I throw a Molotov over there, if I if I do direct detonation, I think that might be a problem for him. But you know what? I'm just crazy enough to do it. Let's let's burn the let's burn the guy. We get that co-op hit, and so now he's on fire and burning for four damage every turn for what looks to be two more turns, and that space is now a burning grid. So. As long as he's there, he will take burning damage. Uh, and if the grid gained two stacks of burning at the end of the turn, so he's kind of screwed. He has to walk away. Oh no! So as you can see, little dude on the right has a single sword icon above his head. That is a single target attack. Dude on the left has multiple daggers. That's an area attack. If he's doing a single target attack, he will always hit whoever is directly in front of him. So even if you're both occupying the same space, having your more tanky dude frontlining is still preferable to having your squishy one frontlining. Area attacks don't care. They'll just hit you anyway. But you know what we also don't care about? This guy's life. Kill him. Bam! He's dead. And she'll even defib him for an overkill because she's brutal like that. And now we've got... See, I could take Dragon Roar here because Dragon Roar, as it's pointing out, has synergy with the fact that I can set places on fire. Wow. <laughs> wow. So we'll do extra magic damage. It scales with mind and strength, which a little bit less strength scaling, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter who gets this because the scaling is just going to be the same on both, for now at least. But if I were able to boost my mind a little bit, it would make a bit more difference. But five damage and then an extra four 
If the target is burning, that's a lot. That's a lot of extra burn. I could take Run, having a chance to get more MP when I use a skill. We've already seen Occam's Razor. This is another example of I could take the Run trait, but I'm going to take the Dragon Scale because I now have some burn synergy that I can mess with. Ah, the boss fight. Don't worry about the burn synergy. We're not going to get to see it because we have a, a boss encounter coming up. So we have filled the investigation meter. So you have to run around and, you know, engage in battles and engage in, in finding stuff. And this little meter up here is going to fill up. And once it's full, the boss will appear. Before I do that, though, I'm just going to equip him with this because I feel like it's necessary to do so for the sake of showing you that I can, in fact, equip my dragon scale and get a little boost to my mind, which is pretty weak. I still think that I should have given it to her, but I want her to set up so that he can do the punchline, you know? Now, boss encounter, moving in. This is a tutorialized, storied style of, of boss fight, so it's not going to be what you think it is, but it is a good way to examine how things in combat work. So this is the big nasty boss that kind of ruined Glitch's uh, uh, team and got him separated from them. This is a neutralizer that they're all messing around with. We're not sure why the neutralizer isn't currently doing its job, but we're going to go and fiddle with it and find out. Now, this is not good for me because Mira can only move two spaces, and even if she makes it to that space, she'll be occupying his area when he does his AoE that hits all around the ground near him, and she'll get hurt. So what can I do in this situation to help Mira using the tools that I have? I'm going to give you a hint. It rhymes with brick. So we're going to move over here behind the guy, and because we are going to be doing a sneak attack, because he's not looking in my direction, we're behind him. We're going to brick him in the back of the head. Bam. And that's going to move him two spaces forward. So now when Mira gets her chance to move, she can just go anywhere and it's no longer going to be her problem. I've also got an extra AP left over. Screw this kid. I don't like you. Also, we can take a look at what this thing can do. So, traits, it is interactable. We can do stuff with it. Oblivion. Don't break it. Okay. We have an interact option over here if I have a movement point left, but I don't because I spent all my turn moving over here in the first place. So let's get Mira's turn underway. And she can only move two spaces too, so she can't interact with it just yet either. But she can move over here and I'm going to be spiteful. I'm going to burn this guy. Yeah, that's right. I'm full of spite and hatred and vitriol for this thing. These guys are moving into place. They're trying to do stuff. He couldn't do his attack because he got messed up. And now he's going to move over here. But that's too late for you because I can interact with the neutralizer. Now that we touch it, stuff is happening. She's out of ammo. Bad situation. It's looking dire. I'm going to have to activate it. Three, two, one. Neutralizer's going off. But this isn't right. What's it doing? This isn't meant to... Oh, no. It's not right. Blah. And bad stuff happens. And then congratulations, kid. You beat the tutorial. You can now play the real game. And it, the real game is going to open up a lot more. If you thought you knew what this was based on the tutorial, you have no idea. So, Stray has unlocked a new uh, recall trait. Don't worry about that just yet. Leadership stuff. Everyone's going to get leadership traits. Don't worry. I'm going to explain all these in a second. So we have our selectable characters. Look at all of these characters. We're picking a leader. We have Glitch, we've met Glitch, we have Mirror, we've met Mirror, we even get a little breakdown as to what they can do. Range support healing, little lore dump on who she is and what she's all about. We have uh, Glitch, who's the melee offensive guy, and we have Stray, our police boy. I think he's a police dog, but he also kind of looks like a bear. But it makes sense that he's like a like a, a police dog, right? Like, like, a, like a bulldog or something. Melee, defense, and crowd control. Very handy, we like the sound of that. We also have all these other characters over here. That's a raccoon. She's got little tech arms. We've got the super edgy assassin knife wielding wolf guy and even have our requirements to unlock these characters. There's a lizard up here. There's like a, a puma cat girl looking thing over here with a beret. We've even got this cool uh, uh, eagle falcon looking girl with a, with a bow and arrow that's going to be cool. And we have our character profile up here where we can come up and take a look at all of our unlocked characters and what they have available. So these leadership traits, right? First responder, completing an elite or boss combat increases all team members max life by one to two. Because we have our level up improvement things that we can see if we've unlocked them already. But we have to get these basically as we go. Boost morale, we already know what that is. Leadership trait, in turn, all team members will recover life upon completing a combat. That sounds really OP, doesn't it? That sounds really great. What's the caveat to that? Well, the caveat is you'd have to start with Mira as your leader. And Mira 
might be a little bit tougher to use at the beginning because she just doesn't have as much life, she doesn't have as much damage, but once you get more teammates, that's where she shines, she is the support. Stray. Stray is, is our new boy, so Stray has all team members gain an additional such armor at the start of each elite or boss combat. Pretty good. Also, shield counter when taking damage, it increases the damage of the next attack by X, so he wants to get hit so that he can hit harder. Hit me, I'll hit you back twice as hard. Pretty good. Who do we want to take for our leader? I'll go with Glitch because we understand Glitch and I can kind of show you the ebb and the flow of a normal run if we're doing, you know, a normal start with, with expected to be like the vanilla boy. This, we've got our normal dude, right? Old Town, chapter one, first area. So let us begin, let us get underway. There's nothing much we can do here, but our investigation meter is empty. We need to progress this so that we can unlock the main boss area. And there's even a special event that will open up once we've gotten this far in the progress. That means there's only one place we can go. Let's go fight this guy down here. I wonder if he's going to be a little jobber who's going to die nice and easy. Run in. What a little fun guy. And I'm going to go wham. Pow. 69% overkill. We have the Hydrophilic Passive Abnormality. We gain one AP when ending a turn on a wet grid. I don't have wet grids in this area, I don't think, unless I can do something. Uh, the Sympathy Syringe, support plus one. I could wait and give this to Mira when we find her. I am, however, going to be, you know, the boring guy and go with the basic support boost because I want, when I find Mira... Oh, wait, we're going to find Stray first? Ooh, interesting. I didn't think we'd find Stray before we found Mira. Let's go get our lad added to our team. Pow, Stray is now on the team. Let's go to this one. It's about to expire. And let's get some, some duo action in here. Oh, dear. We've started on odds over here. We're, we're, we're facing in different directions. This little dude's facing this way. Now, this guy over here, if I select him, he's got a heal ability. We do not like that. We do not like guys that heal. So we're going to come over here. And I'm going to smack the healing dude. Ah, here we go. Flanking, finally. So flanking is Glitch's uh, specialty, as you, you know, gathered from the fact that he gets a 30% bonus to flanking. When attacking an adjacent unit, a flanking attack with your teammate will deal more damage. So, as you can see, Glitch is here, she's there. If I were, and then there's the cornered, okay, cornered. Did I explain cornered already? I don't know if I did. So, if the enemy is pushed into the literal final space, and you're bullying them in the corner like you're playing a fighting game, they'll take bonus damage. I think it's 20 to 30% bonus damage if they're stuck in the corner and you're just kind of pressing them against it. It's pretty good. So, because this guy right now is in this situation, oh my god, look at that. So, he'll take, you, you can see, to the right of where it says damage 10, it's got the flank symbol and it's got the cornered symbol. He's going to take bonus damage because of all of this. I'm going to take it. Nah, dude, I'm taking advantage of this. This is this is too good to be true. That, that's a really cool setup right there. So now if I try and attack from here, we're only going to get flank damage, right? But if I move over onto glitches space, not only do we get cornered damage, but we'll get a co-op attack. No! One life! Don't heal him. He just crowded himself. What a goon. Start by killing this guy. Die. Oh my god, the overkill. The overkill. So as we can see, this little dude is trying to attack this one space right here. We're not going to hang around for that, are we? We're going to move out of here. End my turn. Smash this bug. Boom! Move out of here. Silly bug. He's going to do a heal. Okay, so he's not in the corner right now. So what we're going to do? We're going to flank him. Flank this kid. Wait, he's not facing the right way. It's not a flank yet. No. Flank him. There we go. We got the flank attack. It's too late. He's going to, he's going to, no, he's not going to heal. There we go. So this is a mind and a tech upgrade. Mm, it's kind of the same on both of them, but we have a tech boost over here and we get the butterfly dance. We deal four damage to the target and push yourself back one grid. If it's the first move, so the first thing that we do, the first skill that we use, it'll push back an extra grid so we can actually fly away faster. Let's take this for Mira. There we go. And they all level up. So now Glitch has got access to his bonus flanking damage. Pretty good. And Stray should get access to his when taking damage and increase the damage of the next attack by one. So he'll just hit harder the more he gets hit. So we have a shop. I don't have much money right now. Oh, look, you guys are in danger. 
Uh oh. Actually, I'm in danger because this is going to explode right there. It's going to burn me too, but. Do you think I care? No. Reckless abandon. Go. Ha! Oh, wait. I am out of range. Good. It burned all the way back. Sweet. I like this outcome. <laughs> I like this outcome. End my turn here. Are oh, you burning? I'm sorry. Are you burning? Oh, he's, he's moving up to try and hit me. I'm going to move here. And we're going to smash. Bang. And he dies. Yay. And turn. He burns. He moves up here. So. Burn damage will only happen at the start of my turn. So if I move into the fire and attack him, it's not going to be the end of the world just yet. So let's see if we can get him killed before everything turns bad. Now we just need our boy over here to move over. We do our team up attack and he's dead. Perfect. It's so good when a plan comes together. Oh, sandals. We got the crocs out here. Stomp fire. We're entering a burning grid. Extinguish it and recover one support scaling armor. That's pretty good. We have the brick. Oh, perfect fix. Teammates leaving your grid gain might too. Leaving your grid. That's kind of nice, actually. We need the brick. The brick for uh, glitch is too good. Crisis event. Spore diffusion. Oh, no. So basically what happens here is we've got enough investigation points. The event is unlocked. But I see a little someone that we need to get. But not before. I equip a brick to my guy. Hello there, ma'am. Please join my team. Yay! And when she joins, she's automatically put to my level, so I don't have to worry about her being underpowered, which means she gets the morale boost. And we have stuff for you. So a bonus to support, and a cyclone fly technique, so that you can get away from harm easier. So the factor over here, this little helix, spore diffusion, as they say, we can look at what that is. So now, in all of our combats, we have an extra thing that's going to get in the way. So... Chapter Factor. A random grid is filled with spore fog when the round starts. What is spore fog? We'll have to find out. Let's just do this. We'll get it out of the way. An abandoned safe house with cracks all over the walls. The door and equipment inside are too damaged to use. Search the safe house. Don't find anything of value. Put the key in the lock and open up the door. Secret chamber. There's some equipment. We've acquired the Class C pass, the police ID, and the syringe box. I wonder what all of this is, but we have to enter combat. We turn around, try and leave the room. Enemies are in the way. Eat Gad. We do want all those things because they are very, very important. Ah, oh, look at them all. Look at all the gross ones. Ew. Spore diffusion. We can see the factors over here. So the random grid has a spore. We can see it right here. What is that doing? We also have a fatal injury. Healing received is halved. Oh no, shabby clinic. Oh no, reinforcements. Hostiles will have reinforcements arrive during combat. So we need to get this finished fast. If we take too much time, it's going to be bad. So let's walk our way out of the spore because we will take, like, I think three damage. The spore fog. Hostile. No, two. Hostiles ending a turn in this grid recover two. And then characters ending a turn there will take two. So we just need to not be in this zone. I can move away. I can't do anything from here. We end our turn. We're going to stockpile a little bit of AP this way, though. Oh, there we go. So if it's the first move, we push back one more grid. We don't really need to worry about that kind of stuff. But what we do want to do is maybe move up to here and do a co-op attack with the big man. Are you really so big that you're causing an obstruction on your own? Bro, get shot. Bang. And he pulls out a shotgun. <laughs> yes, he pulls out a shotgun. It's crazy. I'm not going to do that because it's going to push me back into the into the bad. We're not. No, 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 no. So when do you get your turn? You go after Glitch. So we're just going to kill you, dude. Glitch is totally going to destroy you in time. Attack this man. Armor destroyed. Everything else broken. End turn. And this little fella's going to move over. You're in a crowded space. You're in a crowded spore diffusion just dropped up over here. That's nasty. We don't like that. So I've got two AP to waste now. So we can do a normal attack on this guy. Hopefully kill him with a combo attack. And then we can even brick this little dude in the head and push him away and ruin his single attack. So much we can do. Please. Yeah. 
He dies. Brick this kid. Push him away. Slam into that dude. Plus the shotgun. Oof! Biggest oofies! However, this dude in the back is still going to cause me issues. So I'm going to move forward and make it so that we can get some nice team attacks with our fellas. Quick! Pull up on him! Shoot him! Bang! Nice. And turn. Quick! Pull up on him! Smash! Uh. Uh, and they all join up and, and do team attacks. Problem though, he didn't die. <laughs> so he's going to shoot me and do damage to my armor. Cheeky thing that he is. Undo? No, no, no. It's okay. I know about undo. So undo is a really, really, really interesting thing that I did not expect to come out of left field. So I'm going to explain this outside of what the tutorial is saying because I'm going to actually show you what it does. So we just finished doing a turn, right? We have three undos. What can we do if we do this? You guessed it. We can go back and redo that last turn. So I can once again move over here and I can I can smash. Bam. Hmm, same outcome. What if now you see how I, I was on glitch and I got to come back and do Shrey's turn? I haven't ended my turn yet. So what if I do it again? I can come back and just try again. And move over here. I'm gonna smash! Eh, same result. Who could have guessed, right? <laughs> I'm gonna walk over here, end my turn here, and end up taking a little bit of spore damage, but that's okay because that charges me up and I don't care anyway. Basically, undo will let you redo things, but only a limited number of times, so your big critical mistakes aren't as critical and you can kind of make make better do. I don't know if undoing and redoing gives you a chance to trigger things like critical hits, because if you didn't land a crit, you can just redo it until you land the crit, or at least until you run out of all three of your options. I'm not sure, but it's there. So if you made a really huge oopsie, you can go back on it. Lobe Scalpel, tech and strength, amazing for both of our boys over here. Probably dominantly for Glitch. Yeah, he gets a little bit more damage. Deal damage to the target, reap, trigger additional effects if it kills. So if it kills a target, we get 2 AP. It costs 2 movement points to use though. Support plus 3 and we get hypnotize. Has a great chance to stun the enemy for a turn. Break seal, guaranteed to stun. Trigger additional effects if this skill is used for the first time in a combat. So we get a guarantee stun the first time we use it in combat. Inflict slow on enemies for one turn when moving into a grid. Yeah! Class abnormalities are unlocked. So the three different perks we just found, you probably forgot about them already, right? I didn't forget about them. So, Mira comes over here and we're going to equip the Dream Release. That's our stun. I'm going to replace the Cyclone Fly with the Syringe Box, which gives her Healing Shot. She can now shoot a friend and heal them for seven health. But they also gain thriving for two turns. They recover some life at the beginning of the turn. And it also boosts the co-op response range so that you can do co-op attacks when not exactly on top of each other. This is ridiculously good. So of course we're putting it on her. And we'll pass this, we come over here. And now we have the police ID. This teaches him shield bash. Amazing. We'll do extra damage based on strength and tech. To all targets within range, it's an AoE, and it will knock them back by a grid. Amazing. Come over here, and we can give him the C-Class Pass, and he'll get Charge Attack, which, if it's the first move used in his turn, it doesn't cost MP or AP. It's refunded. It's just free. So he gets a free charging attack that can hit dudes on the far ends of the screen. It allows him to place himself so much easier. Oh my god, that's how good. Now, I could give him the butterfly attack, but it's not going to do much. It's better off just doing normal hits. Butterfly thing is cool, but we've just run out of out of need for it. Now, the elite fight over here is expiring. I don't want the elite fight to expire. Let's go fight the elite dude. I want to go take care of the big fella. This is an interesting placement to start off on. Oh my god, what are you? Look at these derpy little legs. These little hand legs. I have never seen this thing. That is nasty looking. What do you do? Deals 11 damage to the target. 
Great. Spore defense. Great. Vigor hormone. All teammates gain rejuvenation at the start of each combat, increasing their max life and regen. So they're just healthier and regen more. Damn, man. And you can see right here, charge attack. It's going to be free. But it only hits dudes on the far end from wherever I'm standing. I could move over to the spore grid and then attack this guy. I think. Please don't mess this up. Yes. Yes. Bam! And we got that refunded, right? We refunded our, our movement point and our, our action point, so now I can brick him and push him into the corner. Uh, so now he's cornered. And my turn. Uh-oh. He moved out of the corner! My other teammates are a bit slower than me. It has to... Nah, it, it has to work, right? Like, 50% is its normal rate, but 100% because it's the first one used. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that... Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I can see... Stunned. Skip the turn. While stunned, you cannot evade, and every hit received is a critical hit. <gasps> I have made a fatal error. Maybe I just shield smash the big boy and knock him away, because if I do this... It'll hit everyone in that space and knock them all back a bit. And this idiot over here is going to miss anyway. So, yeah, let's just do that. Boom! Get sent back, kid. I'm going to end here. Then he walks forward, tries to take off his attack again. Spore diffusion in the back corner. That's bad for me. I could do charge attack again, but I, I really want to kill this guy right here. I could zip over there, dude. I could, like, just... Meow. But my critical rate is guaranteed. I could... Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. She fired! I can't believe she shot from there because I started there. Oh! I didn't know I could... Dude, I didn't know I could do that. Hit him. Yeah! So his turn is next. He's going to come off that stun. But... He kind of hurting. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to move... Nah, I'll just stay here. He recovered life. He missed his attack. Doesn't matter. All right, what is she going to do for her turn? We could move cuz I don't I don't care at this point. I just want I want this guy dead. There we go. End turn. Big man. Let's go kill this thing. I can't. It's obstructed because there's too many dudes in that space. But if I move up to here, I'll get corner damage. Corner damage. Go. Uh, and he's dead. Yay! And now I can just exist here. Well, no, 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 no. I can move out of here because of the spores. And Mira gets attacked and flanked, no less, because there's two attacks coming in from either side. That's not good for me. Uh, Co-op this guy. And if I want, I can move to Mira's grid now. And we'll co-op on this guy. Not that it's needed. But that should pop a heal. Yippee! Move over here. And then shoot. She can't shoot if she's on the same grid. As someone, she has to be like at least one distance away. Yeah. Recover one armor when flanking a target. That's pretty good. For every two debuff the target has, direct damage dealt is increased. Let's do that. Let's do that. That'll help glitch out. Push on. Give me... Robbery. Now, we have another elite over here. We have an event over here. And that little guy's expiring. I don't care. Let's go to the event. Oh, that's ominous. Discovered supplies from the Anomaly Research Association in an abandoned warehouse. Suddenly, a horde of hostiles appeared at the end of the doorway, approaching them at an alarming rate. Caught between the fierce hostiles and the desired supplies, what is the best choice to make? Preserve the supplies. Trigger a difficult combat that contains splendid rewards. Obtain 50 money. All team members lose 3 life. Or just leave with nothing. Um. Yeah, okay. Oh my god! Look at all the negatives! So healing is half. At the end of the character's turn, take minor damage if there are no adjacent allies, so stay together. Hostiles just deal more damage and crystallized. Hostiles periodically gain one stack of parry. Let's go to the shop and buy something first to help me up with that fight, I think. Wait, that's not the shop. It's, it's extra money. I'm an idiot. So... We could acquire up to 60 extra, and we also trigger a new random factor. I have enough factors to worry about. Let's just get money. Yeah, why not? Let's go take a look. This is going to be rough. Ah, oh, it's you again. What are you? Okay, he's cornered. We could stun him. Wait, if he stays there, if he stays there, 
Mira's turn doesn't come up fast enough. I could stun him in the corner, get critical corner damage, and blow him up. What do you do? Slam Frenzy Spore. Grant a friendly target Rampage Spore for two turns. 50% more damage. Okay, so he's a support guy. He doesn't actually do a lot of the stuff himself. This is the problem. We need to get rid of you. Teleport slash this guy, get reimbursed. Move to him slash this guy, get corner damage. And then we're adjacent to our teammate. Get him. Big damage. Big damage. He's already half dead. Biggest damage. Don't do it. Oh, we're crammed, dude. We can't all fit here. This is silly. Stun the doctor so he can't do his nasty stuff. And then on Bear's turn, he does shield slam, push these two into the back wall. Which, yes, it does have spores there and they'll heal a little bit, but doesn't matter. We need to stun that doctor. Dude, hypnotize is so useful. Yay, it's fine. Slam them. There. Suffer and die. Now, what I need to do is actually move here. Here we go. Oh, God. So now, I, if I want to do the, the cool sneaky attack, I've got to move two away so that one, two, three, and then I can do the attack then. But then I'm on him and I'm not... But I might be flanking him then, to be honest, because I'm behind him. Does this always cause a flank? I get two attacks that way versus one attack this way, so I may as well do that instead. But it's obstructed. Can I still do it if it's obstructed? We're going to find out. I can. And now we're in the cramped space. Fascinating. Hit him. Yeah. Great outcome. And we're still next to the dude. We're going to take a bit of spore damage. Don't care. Oh, that's bad. So that's from this guy trying to do an attack. Can any of them stop him on their turn? Or just outright kill him? 26 life? We could make him dead, right? If I move two spaces forward and I do a co-op attack along with our big boy, we can start trying to dust this guy nice and quick. Corner damage. Wait, he'll, he'll take the hit for her. Because he's closer, right? That did a lot of damage. Flanking damage on me? Now spores on me? Kill him. That's right. Ow. Healing shot. Go. Woo! Love it. Come over here. That way she'll be able to participate with the extra attacks. And my guy... You're going to move over here so that you cannot be in harm's way. Uh, uh, hit them all. Dude, the cop attacks are so nice. And the morale boost for the heal. Oh, look at him fly away. Shoot him. Bang. Oh, because he's got the stability thing from the healing shot. He does cop attacks from closer range. From further range, rather. Oh, dude, it worked out so well, and I didn't even mean it to do... Oh, yeah, dude. Tech plus two, gain trait imaginary wall. Damage to 30% more to corner targets. Hell yeah! There's the scalpel. Hell yeah! Co-op response range plus one. Hell yeah! They'll team up with my friends from... Like, I give it to her, she'll just co-op with all the time. All the time, she'll join in which means she'll heal more. I'm going to give her the passive so that she co-ops more, because co-op means more damage, means more healing. Obtain item alpha container. What is, what is, oh, oh, beta container. A rare item used to increase active abnormality slots. It can be used outside of combat. Oh, oh, glitch is level three. Stray is level three. Mirror is level three. I haven't actually seen this at all. This is new to me. You have unused abnormality containers. Increase your character's slots. I might give it to Glitch because he stands to benefit the most from having more moves to spam. I've got two of them, right? I'm going to use one there. No, I'm just going to use it for her anyway because there's no... Yeah, there's no... I've got two of these and I've got one of these. I'm going to give it to Mirror. So I'm going to quickly come and do this discovery because I don't think I've shown you a discovery room yet where we have acquire the abnormality haunted newspaper. 
We get the trait Evil Spirit. Inflict Curse on a random enemy for one turn at the beginning of the turn. Indirect damage taken plus one. If you remember, indirect damage are from non-active things. So anything that I didn't specifically choose for my character to do. So co-op attacks when enemies slam into each other. Um, damage dealing traits. So I'm assuming like being on fire, burning, all that kind of stuff. It's handy. There's really no negative to this. It's just good. Or acquire Forever Ration, which is a higher quality one. But we gain a new factor. Support goes up, max life, and we get Quick Bite. Which we lose a movement and gain an AP. Which for Mira would be pretty, pretty sick. But I don't need the other factor. I don't need it. I'd rather just get a little haunted newspaper. Let's give it to him. Pow, done. And now this is expiring. We can come over here. Go to the safe house. So, recover 40% health and remove all debuffs from all team members. We're pretty healthy as it is. All team members recover 2 health and their max life increases by 2. Pretty good. The selected team member gains well rested for 3 combats. What's that mean? We get two more AP and MP on your first turn. He could he could do like his teleport slash. He can he can slash a dude. He can brick a dude. He could do a lot of stuff in one turn. Actively gotta go with a meditate to be honest. Let's make glitch just ridiculous. Everything else is gone. Eventually you will be left with nothing but the choice to just go and do what you do. I wonder if it's a familiar face. Do do do. Ah, oh, it is. Look at him and his little steppy hands. He summoned a rock. What on earth is that? It's a problem. That's what it is. What did it say? Antlered Colossus? Is that his name? Cool. I never actually looked at his name. These roots act like a shield of sorts. Indirect damage taken is increased. So if I was able to set him on fire, that would have been really nice, but I didn't take any of the fire stuff. So he has extended crush. He's got root ties. Offload direct damage to teammates within three grids when not inflicted with stun and mending. So... That's why there's rocks and stuff everywhere. It looks like he can um, direct damage to other things. Generate three wood spiders nearby and activate mending when his armor hits zero. And he takes up more space. So, I don't really want this, this rock to exist, but... Glitch has all this extra movement, so we may as well use it. So he hits there, so let's... And then I do it. She should still cop with me, right? Uh... She did! So now, if I brick him in the head, he hits the wall, he becomes cornered, I slash him. Ugh. Ugh. Big damage. He's almost had his shield broken already. You're in danger, my guy. You're in danger. Look at him walking around. And now he's trying to hit me from there. I want to break the rock. Bam. <laughs> okay, the rock palsy. <laughs> We're going to get closer to him. I'm gonna move over here and smash this rock, and she should co-op because she gets co-op from, from one extra space away now. Oh my god, not enough to break it though. I could shield bash it. Just... No, I can't. I have to be... No, I'm too close to it now. No, what are you? <laughs> get out of my way. I have to just run behind him and hit him from, from the back. Mash him. Look at all the goons! Uh-oh. But we need to kill him here. We need to do a lot of damage. So the way that this guy works, we knock his armor down, and he'll have, a, like, a rest period where he's, he's mending. Skip the turn. You cannot evade, and every hit is critical. Armor is fully restored when mending is removed. So I now need to obliterate him. That's why all these little dudes are summoned. They're bait. They're here specifically to make me think I need to worry about something else. No, what I need to worry about is moving over here and shooting this guy. Ugh. Co-op slash. Baby. Um, standing by. It's got too many people in it. But if I come here, I can slam him. There we go. Dude, he died immediately. And now I can move here and we can hit the boss. Uh, uh, look at that damage. He's half dead already. Amazing. Now the little guys are going to become a problem. Oh dear. Oh dear. Look at him becoming a problem. Oh dear, dear, dear. So let's make it more of a problem for him. We come over here. Teleport slash. 
Uh, refund my points. Uh, Mira, co-op. Yeah, dude, he's 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 getting obliterated, and he's mended. Oh no! <laughs> but what if I stun him? Oh no! Sucks to be you. I don't want to stand here though. We're in the middle of getting hit, so I might move back a little bit. I can smack him and then move back one. Uh. I need to get rid of these little guys. He's going to summon more when that shield breaks, by the way. How many can he summon? Ah, I got webbed. I was slowed. Wait, does that stop me completely? Look at all these attacks. No, I get one movement. This is cheeks. I could brick him and that'll push him into the spiders, which will become a cramped space and cause collateral damage. No, he got, because, ah, oh, I, I thought he was facing the wrong way. He went all the way through. He didn't stop there at all. Luckily, I get another turn with Glitch before he gets his turn, so we can smash the armor and maybe just outright kill him in time. If we're lucky enough. I'm, I'm going to eat the armor, dude. I'm just going to eat the hit. I want to move here. Fine, shoot the little guy. Ugh. I need to bring Big Boy over with the shield slam, but I think he used it too recently, right? No. Oh, it's time. This will put him in danger, but I break his armor. He goes into mending anyway. It's time. Ugh. Everyone bangs into this dude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, little guys will get their turn. That's fine. We'll eat that hit. Ah. Annoying. Ah. He's still annoying. Another one. Web is annoying. Break his armor. Ugh. Oh my god, there's so many dudes occupying that one space. <laughs> the damage. There's too much occupation going on. All right, step over here. We're killing him here. We're killing him here. He he has to die. He has to die. Bang! Big crits. Oos! Get hit, kid. Is it time to die? Oh! So much damage. Yay! We killed the boss. Cleanse, remove a debuff when round ends. That's so good. But this gives armor regen, which is really good for uh, Stray. Let's do that for Stray. Stray needs love. We did it. The hostiles are beaten. The exit. And then we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we can heal up. We can do stuff for our boy, like give him this so that he's now got armor regen and he's got cleanse. So he's just going to become an uber tank. We have a lot of money now. We can rock up and, and you know, look after ourselves. Now, unless I'm mistaken, we're actually not that worse for wear. We took a bit of heat, but we're looking pretty nice. We've got the heat. We've got forge increase. The member's max armor by two. Let's forge his armor. And now we can leave and go to, <gasps> surprise, surprise, the next chapter, the highway of hell. Something seems off. Look at that face. What the hell is this? It's hell. When did Epsilon get so run down? So we're basically in a worse area. Crisis event, West Wind, everything's bad and the campaign continues. However, I need to start wrapping this up so that the video does not end up being way too long. I want to give another massive thank you to Spiral Up Games and Rocket Punch for sponsoring the video. It's been an absolute blast and I'm looking forward to getting back in and actually progressing into the highway. I've been keen to see what's happening over there. Reminder, the game is out right now. I'll have links in the description. You can head over to Steam and check it out over there. Or if you're feeling lucky, you can head over to the game's official Twitter page. Once again, links down below for that as well. And participate for a chance to win a free Steam key. I had an absolute blast. I'm really impressed with how movement and how pushing dudes around and the flanking and the co oping and team building. And you got to remember, we only used three characters, the three that you see on the screen right now. There's like a whole roster of other characters with different playstyles, different passives, different synergies. I'm looking forward to seeing how team composition is going to come together to create either just unstoppable, unkillable immortal teams or one turn kill, all damage, all, you know, no mercy, monstrous teams, or just like weird synergy teams, like stunning a dude and then killing him while he's stunned like I did, you know, but, but better, better than what I did, better, be better. Let me know what your favorite combos and teams are. 
But with all of that said and done, I gotta get out of here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this first look at Anomaly Collapse, and I will see you all again next time. Have a good one.